guys welcome back to Tech Dose and in this video we will see the separate black and white balls problem which is from lead code number 2938. Let's read the problem statement. In this problem we are given n balls on a table each ball has a color black or white. You are given zero indexed binary string s of length n where 1 and 0 represent black ball and white balls. In each step you can choose two adjacent balls and swap them. We need to return the minimum number of steps to group all the black balls to the right and all the white balls to the left okay let's look at an example for better understanding uh, let's say that we are given the string as one zero double one zero in this case one means a black ball and zero means a white ball so i will just be using ones and zeros our goal is to find the minimum number of swaps to bring all the zeros together on the left hand side and our constraint is only adjacent swaps are allowed so we cannot simply swap this zero with one directly that is not possible so in order to bring this zero to the left hand side maybe i have to swap with this one and then swap with the another one right so if you look at the given example and if i try to bring all the zeros on the left side then the first zero will be swapped with this one and you see the new state change and after that this zero will be swapped three times okay so when you swap this zero with the last one then the state becomes zero one and after that this zero will be uh, swapped with this one and so the state change will happen to zero one one and so on so for the first one to be placed in the beginning the number of swaps required was one and for this zero the last one to be placed just after the first one the number of steps will be three so the total number of steps is four which is one plus three so i think you have understood the problem statement using the naive approach you can actually perform the swaps what you can do is whenever you see a zero you place it to the leftmost one okay just you swap it so if you swap it then this becomes zero and one when you see the next zero then you keep swapping it unless you run out of all the ones so if you keep swapping it then the state change will happen to zero zero one 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 these ones will slide to the right hand side by one position this is the naive approach in the worst case scenario you will have all the ones on the left hand side and the zeros on the right hand side so let's say you have uh, n by two number of zeros on the right hand side so all of them has to be moved uh, to n by two steps and so the total number of steps can be order of n square actually so this is an order of n square approach where n is already given to be less than equals to 10 to the power of 5 n square will be less than equals to 10 to the power of 10 so definitely this is not going to pass within one second so actually performing the swap will not be a solution now let's look at some observation which will help us build the actual solution zeros in the prefix is already at their correct position okay so this means that the initial zeros were already at their correct place so the first two zeros here are already at their correct place they don't need any swapping only the zeros which occur after a single one they need to be swapped and brought on the left hand side okay so zero at position three and zero at position five needs to be moved to the left if you look at the second example all the zeros on the left hand side that means three zeros need not be moved they are already at their correct position but we do not have any zero after the first one's occurrence and therefore the number of swaps required here will already be zero because this is already in their correct ordering right now if you look at the second point a zero will always be positioned from the first one's position from left to right the meaning of this is if you look at the first example zero one one zero one zero the prefix zeros are already at their correct position so you need not do anything for them only after the first one's occurrence we will be moving all the zeros at position 3 and position 5 on to the left side if you start performing the swap operation then this 3 and 2 position will get swapped and this will become 0 this will become 1 and again 2 and 1 position will get swapped so this will become 0 and this will become 1 what has effectively happened is the 1 2 uh, window which actually contained all the ones got slided by one position and the vacant space which was created was actually occupied by the zero now if i take this example again and i write double zero one 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 zero and if i try to move this zero then all these ones will be sliding by one position to the right hand side and this zero will fit in the middle if you look at it then you swap this zero with the last one this will become zero one you swap this zero with the last one it, it, it will become zero one one and you swap this with the last one it will become zero one 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 and the previous two zeros appended this will be how the final uh, string will look like after performing the minimum swaps so where are the zeros being positioned which were at 3 and at 5 the 
the third uh, index zero got positioned at one, which is the first occurrence of one, and the fifth position zero actually got placed to two, which is just the next index of the first occurrence of one, right? So that is why I said that a zero will always be positioned from first one's position moving from left to right. So the number of steps in this case will be if uh, index three zero was positioned at one, then the number of swaps taken will be three minus one, which will be two. And if fifth position zero was placed at index two, then the number of swaps needed would be five minus two. And so the total number of uh, minimum swaps will be five. If we look at the second example, the first two prefix zeros uh, actually do not need to be swapped. Only after the first occurrence of one, all the zeros needs to be swapped. So where will this uh, index three zero go? By the previous example, you know that this will go to two. And the contribution will be equals to three minus two, which will be equals to one. And where will this sixth index zero go? It will go to index number three, which is just the next position of the first occurrence of one. If there was another zero, then this would go to index number four, right? But there is no such zero, so this index six will go to index uh, three, and so the difference contribution will be three, and the total contribution is equals to four. So by this we can conclude that all the zeros will be grouped together by a swap from first one's position. That means what is the first one's position? This is two. To the left of it, actually the prefix zeros do not contribute to the swaps because they are already at their correct position. Only from the first one's position, you will see that all the zeros occurring at index three, index five, index six, and index eleven, they will start. Uh, I mean, taking position from index number two. So this three will go to position number two, five will go to position number three, six will go to four, and eleven will go to five, because all the zeros needs to be clubbed together. And the zero on the leftmost side will always take the leftmost position in the grouping because that will give you less number of swaps. So you can try this with a pen and paper, and you will get the same exact result. What is the difference between three and two? It is one. So the contribution will be one here. What is the difference between 5 and 3? It will be 2. So the contribution is 2 here. Again for 6 and 4 the contribution is 2. For 11 and 5 the contribution is 6. So the total contribution is 6 plus 4 plus 1 which is 11. So the answer in this case should be 11. So based on this idea we can actually uh, do counting based on the expected position of the zeros. Okay so let me show you a dry run based on greedy counting. In this case, I will be maintaining a leftmost one index, where the right zeros will be placed. Actually, so I will be uh, defining an L pointer, which is actually the leftmost one index, and I will be maintaining a total counter, which will be uh, keeping a count of minimum number of swaps needed. Now I have to skip the prefix zeros because I know that they are useless. So I will be going to index number two. This is the first one occurrence, so this will be updated to index number two. Now, starting from index number three to the right, I will be checking for the zeros occurrence. Is index three equals to zero? No. So I pointer will go to four. Is index four equals to zero? Yes. So where it should be placed? It will be placed to index L. So if you do the adjacent swap, though, so the number of swaps required will be four minus two, which is two swaps. So add two here. Okay. And then if this zero is placed here, we will not be actually changing the string, but let's. Uh, say that I am changing the string here for your understanding. I'll make here zero, and uh, I will make here one. Okay, and then I will be moving forward. So if I move forward, the L should also move forward because the previous position of L has been occupied by a zero. So the next position should be the new position for the new zero. Now this is a one, so it is not a zero. So no swap is needed. It is a zero. Where it should be placed? It will be placed at index three. What is the gap? It is three. So we will add three to it, and this becomes five. Okay. Now, if we actually had to do this, then this will become zero, and here you can write a one, and then the left pointer will move forward. And now you again see a zero here, which is at index number uh, seven. So this zero will be swapped with the L pointer, which is at four. So this will become a zero, and this will become a one. What is the number of swaps required? Seven minus four, which is three. So three will get added, and so the final total count will be eight. And this is how we can use the greedy counting technique uh, to find out the minimum number of swaps to bring all the zeros together on the left hand side. The time complexity of this approach will be order of n because we just did one parsing, and the space complexity is order of one. 
Let's now look at the code. If you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months, then we have brought for you both the DSA and the system design live interview training program. The most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one on one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number this is the c++ code the java and python code will also be present in the description below you can check it out in this case we are given the string and i will be finding the size of string the total count will be keeping a track of minimum number of swaps and the leftmost one index will be pointing to the first occurrence of one initially so i will be skipping all the prefix zeros here and once i have done that then i will iterate using an i pointer just to the next index of the first occurrence of one and if i see a zero then the ith index zero will be swapped with the leftmost one index item which is the l pointer that i had shown in the dry run so what will be the total number of uh, swaps that, that is needed it will be equals to i minus l and this is the i minus l value okay and finally when you do the swap here you had a one here you had a zero you will make a zero here you will write a one here then you will do l plus plus and you will say that this is the new position where a new zero will come if there is any zero right so that is why we did leftmost one index plus plus and finally we will return the total count so this is the entire idea i hope you are able to understand it if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you